আসসালামু আলাইকুম গুড ইভিনিং एवरीबॉडी আজকে যে ক্লাসটা আমি নিব সেটা আমরা ইয়ার শুরু করছি উই অলরেডি ফিনিশ অ্যানাটমি ফিজিওলজি অফ ইয়ার সিম্পটমস অফ ইয়ার ডিজিজ হাউ টু ইনভেস্টিগেট ইয়ার ডিজিজ एवरीथिंग আই জাস্ট ইউ নো ফিনিশ দ্যাট সো টুডে চলে ডিজিজ অফ দ্য ইয়ার and as you know the year has got three division external year middle year and inner year so today actually i will discuss very short about disease of the external year external year disease er bhitore amader khub beshi kichu lage na khub importantly tin char ta jinish lage jeta amra porikkhay dhori ebong porikkhay ashe seta hocche tomar otitis externa ekta important chapter the infection of the external year otitis externa eta khub important porikkhar shomoy amra dhori রিটেন পেপারে আসে এবং শর্ট নোট আসে প্লাস আমরা ওরাল এক্সামিনেশনে জিজ্ঞাসা করি আপনার এই সেকশনের সম্বন্ধে দুই নম্বর হচ্ছে কি কমন একটা প্রবলেম ইয়ারে ওয়্যাক্স ইম্প্যাক্ট একটা ওয়্যাক্স বা ওয়্যাক্স বা আমরা বাংলা যেটা বলি কানে খোয়েল বা খোল জমা হয় সেটা নিয়ে আমরা কিছু কথা বলবো আর হচ্ছে ফরেন বডি ইন দ্য ইয়ার এটা আমাদের শর্ট নোট থাকে বা পরীক্ষার সময় জিজ্ঞাসা করি ভাইবা করে তাহলে এই তিনটা জিনিসটা মেইন কিন্তু তারপরেও আমরা কিছু কিছু জিনিস জানতে হয় যে ইয়ারে আসলে কি কি প্রবলেম হয় আমাদের সেই সম্বন্ধে আমরা আজকে আলাপ করব উইল স্টার্ট দ্যাট সো ডিজ অফ দ্য এক্সটার্নাল ইয়ার ইফ ইউ ইউ নো ক্লাসিফাই এনি ডিজিজ ইন এনি ওয়ে উই নো দ্য ডিজিজ ক্লাসিফাইড ইনটু ইন डिफरेंट ওয়ে ফার্স্ট ইজ কনজেনিটাল অ্যাজ ইউ নো ইনফেকটিভ ইনফ্ল্যামেটরি ট্রমাটিক নিওপ্লাস্টিক এন্ড মিসলেনিয়াস তো যে কোনো জিনিস যখন আমাদের পরীক্ষায় যদি ধরে তাহলে এই যে প্রিন্সিপালটা আছে এরকম ইয়ে করবে যে কোনো ডিজিজ যখন বলতে পারবে বা হোয়াট আর দ্য কজেস ইফ ইউ ডিভাইড দ্য কজেস অ্যাকর্ডিং টু দ্যাট ওয়ে যে তুমি একটা করে উদাহরণ দিয়ে দিলে দেখবে যে অনেকগুলো হয়ে গেল তো সুতরাং কনজেন্টাল ডিজিজ অফ দ্য এক্সটার্নাল ইয়ার আর পিনা এটা তোমাদের জন্য খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট না কিন্তু আমি জাস্ট দেখো কি হয় সেটা কনজেন্টাল অ্যানোমলিস এখানে লুক অ্যাট দিস দিস আর কমন প্রবলেম ইউ নো লোকরা মনে করে যে না এটা জন্মগত হয়ে আসছে এটা কাটতে গেলে হয়তো বা তার কোন বিভূত হবে এটা কোন অভিশাপ আসবে এই ধরনের বাজে সুপার স্টেশন মানুষের মতো আছে বাট ইজিলি ইউ ডোন্ট কেয়ার এটা থাকলেও থাকতে পারে নো প্রবলেম বাট একটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট ইয়ে আসছে সো লুক আট দিস এই পেশেন্টদের ডেফিনেটলি দেয় সাম প্রবলেম এটা আমরা কনজেনাল ডিজিজের ভিতরে একটা তোমার জানো ট্রিসা কলিন সিনড্রোম পিয়ার রবিন সিনড্রোম সেই ধরনের একটা প্রবলেম এখানে এক্সটার্নাল পিনা ইজ মেল ফর্ম অ্যাজ ইউ নো দ্য পিনা ইজ ফর্ম বাই সিক্স টিউবার কল from first branchial arse so ekhane tubercular fuse hoyni there is some separate uh, tubercle ebong ekhane dekhbe extraordinary canal nai so this is absence of extraordinary canal ei kon sensation e jodi hoy tahole patient minute some reconstruction uh, we can also reconstruct the extraordinary canal but it's very difficult operation patient actually uh, suffer from conductive hearing loss so that their speech e kono problem hobe na hearing ta down thakbe then ta on kichu kora nai but you can also uh, reconstruct the pinna as well as the extraordinary canal is very simple many of, of you have or we have this problem so this is a accessory uh, skin tag or oracle nothing can be done but you can easily excise this one without any problem this is actually the, you know the fanning out of the of the external uh, pin actually sometimes this part the anti helical part border is, is absent sometimes that's why this is uh, a protruding ear or bat ear this is very simple we can score this one and we can make anti helix it is the key problem hoy usually no problem but sometimes if the children go to this school uh, the people can tease the, their classmate they can tease the children so they may he may be psychologically upset ei dhoroner situation amra shonto autoplasty boli eta kamra amra we can reconstruct this uh, anti helical border to make a normal ear yeah eta korte pare এগুলো তোমাদের দরকার নাই তোমার দেখাচ্ছে এমনি তোমাদের জন্য এটা দরকার নাই এটা ওরকম ভাবে ফটোটিং ইয়ার ব্যাট ইয়ার আচ্ছা ফটো বডি এটা তোমাদের দরকার আছে লুক আট দিস 
this is a, 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 a small hole uh, that I entered the root of the helix. It, it take a classical site of pre-auricular sinus. As you know, sinus, fistula, sinus is a blind tract, uh, which is communicating from one epithelial surface to the surrounding structure, lined by unhealthy ground tissue sometimes. So this is sinus, is ABC of surgery. Now look at this, this is sinus. Usually it is asymptomatic, it doesn't produce any, any symptoms. But if the sinus sometimes is blocked, then it causes some infection. And look at this infection, the whole area is swollen and they're forming an abscess. This is an infected periocular sinus. If this situation occurs, how to treat? First, incision and drainage of abscess, and then eventually you have to go for operation. That means excision of the, or thorough excision of the sinus tract. Any sinus treatment is thorough excision of the sinus tract. So, we can uh, apply a healing of this. We can give an electrical incision around like this, and we can follow the sinus tract, and then excise this one and close the uh, wound. It is very simple. So periodical sinus is a common problem for short case sometimes in surgery. Uh, we can also give this one as a short nose. So this is, this is uh, periodical sinus. Uh, this is common. Another pit is here. Again, this is also a part of periodical sinus. Treatment is thorough excision of the sinus tract. But usually, we don't need any treatment if it is asymptomatic. But if it is symptomatic, if it causes a recurrent infection, then patient needs treatment. That is excision of the sinus tract. Again, this another one is infected periodical sinus. Now, there is another situation that sometimes due to trauma or spontaneously, there is some collection of blood or serous fluid under the mycoperigondium of the, of the, of the, of the pina. It's the hematoma oris, sometimes cidosis. So in this situation, usually we can aspirate the fluid and you can make a pressure effect here. Patient usually sometimes this doesn't have any problem, but patient have a pain. And eventually, if you don't treat, sometimes infected causing pericondritis. So in this situation, you have to excise or drain the fluid. We can sometimes also excise some part of the cartilage and put a quilting suture and pressure bandage to prevent reaccumulation or recurrence. But this is also not for you. I mean, they will never ask this question in the exam. What is external is the key part today's discussion that what is external. Now, what is what is external? What is external is defined as inflammation of the external layer. That means the pina and external artery canal mostly. This is what is external inflammation or infection. The lots of uh, patients may have what is external. So, who are the sufferer of what is external? Patient those who have very bad habit of scratching the pina or external artery canal with with uh, with uh, with the dirty fingernails or with the cotton bud, they are irritating the external water canal. They may have this. Those who are diving under water, swimming in an infected pond, you know, they are in suffer of water dissection. The patient those who have a very narrow ear canal, they may have suffering of the water dissection. The patient those who have a, a tumor in the external water canal, bony tumor like osteoma, they may have of this. And mostly the, those people those who always cast their, their uh, external artery canal with, with this uh, cotton bud, dirty fingernails, they may suffer from what is external. Uh, other patients, uh, patients may have what is external, those who have elderly diabetic patient, uh, that is called malignant what is external, we'll discuss this one. So this is the definition, is infection or inflammation of the external auditory canal and pina. That is what is external. It can be classification of what is external is very important for exam, Classify otaris external, written question. Classify otaris external, viva question. Okay, so how to classify? Very simple way to classify otaris external is infective and reactive. Infective is very simple. Infective means infection by bacteria, by fungus, and by virus. And reactive. Now, what are the under the infective heading uh, caused by Staphylococcus aureus, like pharyngitis? Pericondritis, infection of the of the, of the pina, uh, infection by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, by it's called pericondritis or diffuse infective arteries externa, or uh, your patient may have uh, you know limited infection here. Pseudomonas is a malignant arteries external is caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So these are the infective bacterial infection. 
in the form of parenchymosis of the external auditory canal uh, where the hair uh, hair follicle is there outer one third of the external auditory canal so very severe patient has very severe pain parenchymosis the patient feel pain when you open the mouth or try to swallow or try to chew the food they got this pain it's called parenchymosis and this is one of the important for the primary otalgia primary otalgia parenchymosis what is parenchymosis from is defined as is a acute staphylococcal infection of the hair follicle and is associated with sebaceous gland okay this is parenchymosis usually in the external organ now uh, so this is parenchymosis uh, other infection as i said typhus infective water section a uh, patient has a very swollen external auditory canal external organ is completely blocked you know severe pain sometimes some discharge so this is diffuse infective or that is external sometimes by streptococcal infection is eri syphilis so there is bacterial infection uh, and fungal infection is caused by some fungus uh, as you know aspergillus and uh, candida and the albicans causes white debris or fungal ball and aspergillus niger aspergillus fumigatus causing a black mass or debris here so fungal infection of the of the external is called otomycosis and this is very important for exam we ask this question in the exam short notes okay and viral usually by herpes virus herpes simplex herpes zoster sometimes patient has got severe viral infection of the external canal uh, it's called herpes zoster oticus sometimes it causes facial palsy i'll tell later it's called ramsey hunt syndrome so that is all about otitis externa now this is look at this perichondritis uh, the whole pinna the perigondium of the pinna affected and leading to abscess formation so it's called perigondal abscess now who are the sufferer of this perichondritis actually the person who who got injury to the perichondrium or of the cartilage the the women they used to pierce their ear lobe that's it because it has got fat now if they try to make more hole around the margin of the of the of the, of the pinna in the border they sometimes they touch the perichondrium or cartilage and they cause this sort of perichondritis the women the young lady they try to be more beautiful they try to pierce the uh, pinna with some infected needle or something like that and they got this infection so what happens eventually they got perichondritis and eventually they got collapse of the pinna so they try to be more and more beautiful now it end up with this very ugly pinna so that's why my suggestion to the women don't pierce your your pinna uh, because allah has given your permission to you just make a hole in the ear lobe not here so if you want to pierce this one be very much careful you end up with this perichondritis so if the perichondritis uh, happens then how to treat you have to uh, incise and drain the the abscess as well as you have to remove the whole infected cartilage and make a drain put a drain here intravenous antibiotic painkiller and eventually sometimes so this another perichondritis and perichondral abscess look at this vicious pass is coming up and eventually you will end up with this cauliflower pinna look at this so this is the end result of perichondritis so don't do that okay be careful parenchymosis as i said this is a staphylococcal infection now how to treat parenchymosis we asked this question in the exam this is a primary cause of otalgia primary otalgia it is is caused by staphylococcus aureus so you will uh, prescribe antibiotic is a coloxacillin or flu coloxacillin is a drug of choice and if there is abscess formation you can drain the abscess otherwise you give antibiotic if the canal is very swollen you can put a dressing it's called ichthyomolin glycerin ribon gauze take ribon gauze with ichthyomolin glycerin and put a dressing antibiotic is fluoxacillin and painkiller or analgesic and usually it heals and patients uh get pain when he open the mouth or you know chew the food so this, this is parenchymosis otomycosis is a fungal infection of the uh, external auditory canal caused by uh, candida albicans aspergillus niger aspergillus fumigatus now how to understand this parenchymosis uh, sorry otomycosis 
the patient sometimes complains of severe itching of the external artery canal. So first one is itching, followed by severe pain, awful pain in automycosis. So otalgia, pain, and then discharge of some black debris, it's called fungus or white debris, like, like a white paper. If you just put some water in the paper, so paper or like debris in case of candida. So these are the feeling and patient may complain of hard of hearing. So first thing is itching of the ear, then severe pain or otalgia, or primary otalgia, some the discharge of some debris. This is the common of otomycosis. Now, how to treat otomycosis? This is a question asked in the exam. That is the key point of your exam is otomycosis, the fungal infection. Now, first thing is you have to clean the automycotic debris or plaque. So that means oral quarantine. Clean the, many of the doctors, they don't clean. They put some antifungal drops, antibiotic, but doesn't work. So first thing is clean the air. Yeah, that means oral tolerating or oral suction of the automycotic plaque. Take it out and then put some antifungal drops. There are many antifungal drops available in the market. One person to remodel, uh, clarizol drops, we can use sometimes uh, parkolite or mercury, uh, one in 4,000 in ratio. But it's very burning sensation. I mean, if you put uh, antifungal drops, it's very burning. But anyway, so auto, uh, uh, broad spectrum antifungal is clotrimazole. We can also have uh, canestin uh, uh, cream. We can put it with some uh, olive oil and make it a drop. But usually we put 1% uh, clotrimazole broad spectrum antifungal drops, clarizol drops. We can also use uh, parkolite or mercury. These are the uh, antifungal drops. So antifungal drops, number two. Number three, usually it mixed with some bacterial infection. So we give antibiotic, comoxiclop, saproxamic, uh, any, any antibiotic can also put in. Now, if the canal is very much swollen, I can also put some mixed uh, antibiotic drops with steroid side by side, okay? Uh, then adequate analgesic or painkiller, usually it improves. So the first thing is oral toilet. It's very important. And then put antifungal drops. You can also put antibiotic with steroid drops, uh, antibiotics, analgesics. So that's all about automycosis. Now, look at this. This is the automycotic fungal aspergillus niger flag. So we have to clean this one and then put the drops, antibiotics, analgesics. Okay, now this is another... Uh, uh, we, we classify otitis external one is infective, so the other infective, another reactive. Now, under reactive headline, we'll have uh, eczema, we'll have psoriasis, we'll have seborrheic dermatitis. Look at this, the skin is very scaly, multiple scaly skin, the seborrheic dermatitis, it's a systemic disease. Actually, uh, reactive otitis external is a part of the systemic disease, part of skin disease. So, you have to treat accordingly. So, this is seborrheic dermatitis, is a reactive type of water section. This is eczema. Look at the eczema. So it's part of the uh, sometimes reaction with the ornaments, sometimes drugs, usually ornamentation. Sometimes they are allergic to ornaments. So this is eczema water section. Uh, you have to give some steroid uh, cream or ointment. Uh, so you can also give oral steroid antihistamine. That's about eczema water section. Now, viral order sectiona is called herpes zoster and herpes simplex virus. Uh, this is one type of uh, viral order sectiona. This, this lady is Irish lady, actually. This picture I took, it was in 19, I think, 1996, long ago. I, when I was working in Ireland, Tullamore General Hospital, I took the picture. I put it in my book. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a surgery book. I put this in my surgery book as well as my recent uh, autolanguage book. I also put this on this picture. Now look at this. The patient has got a very viral rash or, or scab around the face. And also the patient has got, look at this uh, facial palsy here. So this is called ramsey hunt syndrome. Uh, it, it, this virus, herpes zoster virus, infect the genital ganglion. Look at this. So this is a viral rash in the pina, as well as the patient has got uh, facial palsy. So this is called ramsey hunt syndrome. This viral lottery section, you have to uh, put systemic uh, antiviral drugs like uh, acyclovir or jovirax. You can also give local as well. 
uh, and painkiller uh, usually the symptoms go off so this now another condition is malignant otitis externa is a bacterial infection of the external aortic canal deep part of the external aortic canal now this question is asked in the exam in different way malignant otitis externa this is a very grave disease or severe form of otitis externa uh, patients usually elderly elderly diabetic patients immunocompromised patient those who like a lymphoma patient or any cancer patient those who are taking anti cancer drugs they are losing their immunity so they may be more prone to develop this malignant otitis externa usually occurs in elderly so i put this question in the exam a 60 years or 70 years old diabetic immunocompromised patients complaints of severe pain in here say right here with blood stain oral discharge and got facial palsy what is your diagnosis so diagnosis malignant otitis externa this questions are very difficult in the exam either short notes or clinical problem solving questions 70 years old male diabetic patient immunocompromised patient presents with severe pain in here with blood stain oral discharge and got facial palsy what is your diagnosis the diagnosis malignant otitis externa so this is the uh, condition caused by pseudomonas aeruginosa <clears throat> the pressure the hallmark of malignant otitis externa is initially starts with granulation tissue at the junction of the of the cartilage and bone of the external aortic canal and then gradually it got osteitis osteomyelitis of the skull base bones and gradually erode the skull base uh, involving the seven nerve and then nine ten eleven twelve nerves the skull base involving skull base so it's very aggressive uh, multiple nerve paralysis <clears throat> and patient have discharge blood stain discharge from the ear so this is malignant otitis externa now uh how will you manage this one is a very grave disease high mortality rate if we don't treat the patient right away now as cause uh, the positive organism we see the one as arginosa so you have to treat the patient with intravenous antibiotic with the tetrabromycin with the ticarcelin antibiotic but nowadays uh, we don't have that much antibiotic here so we can use uh, cidomonas anti cidomonal drugs like ciprofloxacin intravenous or you can use ceftriaxone uh you have to put uh, iv antibiotic for long term basis uh, even oral antibiotic if you want to give uh, ciprofloxacin for long term patient usually needs uh this drugs for long uh, term and adequate pain killer but if patient's condition doesn't improve then you have to uh, treat patients surgically usually for malignant otitis externa for you people you need A, a drastic operation we call modified radical no it's called radical mastectomy operation so patient may needs medi- uh, radical mastectomy operation eventually the sometimes patient may need a uh, circumferential petrosectomy and they remove all of these bones you know uh, it's called circumferential petrosectomy nowadays we can also do that but still then the high mortality rate about 60% or 70% mortality So malignant otitis externa is a short notes for your exam, and in clinical scenario, we will put this question in the in the report. Okay, okay. malignant otitis externa, never forget. Now let so uh, all about the otitis externa. Uh, out of this otitis externa, uh, frankulosis in short notes, and uh, your otomycosis or fungal otitis externa, and diffuse infective otitis externa. So any otitis externa, the treatment is uh, any form of Uh, antibiotic uh, and also with the oral dressing oral toileting if the canal is very swollen you have to put a ichthyomolin glycerin uh, ribbon gauze or you can use a steroid uh, we usually give uh, antibiotic and steroid ointment we have so we can mix up with the ribbon gauze and put the oral dressing so that the swelling will reduce next day and patient have less pain eventually so and then antibiotic and painkiller or analgesic So the other principle of treatment of otitis externa. Sometimes we put uh, antibiotic and steroid uh, drops in addition to fung- antifungal drops. Okay, so that is all about now wax. Uh, actually, this question is asked in the short notes. Sometimes five exam. What is wax? So wax is defined as discomated epithelium, 
with secretion from the sebaceous or pyrosebaceous or cerebellar glands in the outer extraordinary canal mixed with drought so wax is a mixture of uh discommoded epithelium secretion from the cerebellar or pyrosebaceous glands okay and the dirt or dust the mix up uh, forming wax usually wax is formed in two way ones dry wax and wet wax they constantly shedding the wax is producing and the outer extraordinary canal with the epithelial migration they are shedding out so you don't need to clean the wax you don't need to remove the wax it's automatically wash out but if in any situation sometimes the wax is making very hard and impacted and that produces the problem or symptom otherwise wax usually produces no symptoms so what is that if, if the wax is impacted in the extraordinary canal how it produces the symptom what is the symptom the common symptoms are patient come with sudden deafness that means the ear is blocked sudden deafness severe pain in ear due to impaction is called primary otalgia sudden deafness patient have a uh, buzzing sound in the ear or tinnitus ringing sound this is occasional vertigo so this is all, wax can produce all symptoms in the ear now the question is suppose a patient is absolutely normal now how it produces sudden uh, deafness the, the wax is there there is some space between the wax and the canal but when you take a good shower with, with shampoo something like that so the wax swell up and completely block the extraordinary canal and that's why they present with severe pain and sudden deafness now anyway so impaired wax what to do actually you have to remove the wax some if it's soft wax then you have to uh, take it out with with suction simple suction you can clean the wax sometimes impaired wax we can remove with a classical jobson horn probe with I, i can take it out very nicely but if very hard wax then you can mix uh, put some olive oil or wax oil or sudibicarb drops to make the wax soft this is a warm olive oil it's classical and put it there for 7 days and when it is stopped you can take it out by probe or by suction so that is all about wax this is short notes for wax keratosis of appearance is another condition you don't need this one sometimes we for post graduate students we, we use this one what happens here the, due to some neglected wax or sometimes the as you know the normal epithelial migration that means the shaded epithelium squamous epithelium or discommoded epithelium constantly migrating outside this is the normal but when this they fail to migrate this squamous epithelium so the keratocyte keratin plaques they are gradually accumulated in the deeper part of the extraordinary canal and they are impacted there and they erode the bone they produce some osteolytic enzymes osteoclastic enzymes you know and they gradually erode the extraordinary canal bones and because severe pain in here so keratosis appearance is a primary uh, cause of one of the important cause of primary otalgia so the keratin plaques or plaques they accumulated in the extraordinary canal and then block completely they widen the canal so this is a solution we need to clean the keratosis appearance they clean the plaques under ga or even under local anesthesia and then clean all the debris and then we put a dressings with steroid and uh, antibiotic ointment uh, and then put antibiotic painkiller and that the condition usually settles sometimes it can also erode the tympanic membrane it can uh, perforate the tympanic membrane so this is very painful condition firm body in the ear is important for your exam as you know any firm body like a nose throat in the ear firm body cone firm body as you know who put the firm body actually uh, the pencil beads you know pearls anything uh can be put in the children they are the most common victim actually they put this one silently or unwillingly but if the patient is very psychologically upset patient or psychotic patient they can also put this one and other persons they can put in a simple person those who scratch their extraordinary canal with a cotton bud and the cotton bud this cotton bud cotton bud can be left behind in the ear so these are the all front body the front body the ear is classified in the different way you can see living front body and non living front body or you can have organic and inorganic front body organic like your papers inorganic like your stones uh, pearls beads you know all this inorganic organic as your paper on seeds peas 
vegetable like they can also put in the yeah. so this is the foreign body now what are the complaints what are the problem sometimes is unnoticed but in the children uh, noticed by the parents actually they brought the children to us or the or the living foreign bodies can be get in this is very painful like flies like mosquitoes like cockroaches anything can go inside and this is very awful when they crawl the external canal you know the pina is awful sensation they straight away they usually come to us so this is a living foreign body now how to uh, treat this foreign body as you know the piece of foreign body treatment is removal of the foreign body usually in children we usually remove under ga with the flat foreign body you can take it out easily but children usually prefer to do, uh, to remove the foreign body under general anesthesia in adult patient living foreign body you have to kill the foreign body first with chloroform with spirit with the alcohol and then take it out sometimes we have to suppose mosquito is there small flies is there we can put a suction tube and take it out very easily we can have forceps tilis forceps uh, crocodile forceps take this out so anything we have to remove this one foreign body now if the hazard if you don't remove foreign body the living foreign body they can damage the external organ they can damage the pina that's why you have to remove this one uh, this is another uh, uh, condition here is a kilowatt scar uh it's very awful condition if you uh, just uh, pierce the pina and touch the cartilage sometimes it happens it's a genetic condition it's called kilowatt uh, you have to exercise this one sometimes we reconstruct the pina but high recurrence rate we can use some steroid injection uh, time strong injection after removal to prevent recurrence we can use some pressure rings to prevent recurrence but sometimes it recurs so this is a kilowatt now this is the carcinoma of the pina look at this the, the ulcerated area here now in the pina the malignant lesion is uh, commonly is a basal cell carcinoma bcc or squamous cell carcinoma but also you have benign tumor in the external organ canal like your osteoma like your exostosis osteoma is single exostosis uh, is your multiple uh, sometimes the external organ canal they usually produce no problem uh, usually asymptomatic you don't need any treatment but if the osteoma or exostosis uh, become very narrow it can cause conductive deafness or it can cause retention of the wax then you can uh, take it out we usually just take it out uh, this is actually uh, uh, squamous carcinoma so this part you have to excise this part and reconstruct the part uh, the person those who are exposed to sunlight they usually have this one uh, this uh, carcinoma uh, for undergraduate student usually you don't need this but only thing is you remember that this is a common uh, cancer in the pina is bcc basal cell carcinoma, carcinoma we have also squamous cell carcinoma uh, i think uh, in the okay so uh, there is not that much in external aortic canal disease of the pina and external aortic canal Uh, we have congenital disease uh, from that periocular sinus is important infected periocular sinus we have otitis externa among this uh, malignant otitis externa is important otomycosis is is is, is important uh, and also some parenchymosis and uh, your uh, wax in the external aortic canal is important if it is impacted uh, this is one of the cause of sudden deafness conductive deafness is impacted the wax so we have to remove the wax and foreign body in the ear there are different types of foreign bodies sometimes very hardly if that there is ball bearing suppose is impacted in the external aortic canal uh, you may not take it out very easily so in this situation we have to give a post surgical incision and then ex expose the external aortic canal from the back and you can take it out it happens very occasionally uh, you have to remove by post surgical incision so that is our front body now uh, so that is all about the disease of the external uh, ear uh, don't forget otitis externa classification of otitis externa infective reactive infective is bacterial viral and fungal and reactive is your reaction to other disease like a skin disease it is is your eczema psoriasis uh, seborrheic dermatitis okay that is all about the disease of the external ear uh, in short because you don't need that 
only two or three topics is important for exam and i think that's all for today and from next week uh, i will take class uh, on tuesday on tuesday i think the genesis uh, if i you all of you uh, thank you very much for attending uh, you can share this one those who are not attending at, at least you can rely uh, you can relay these things uh, to others so that uh, they can have a look to this lecture uh, what we usually ask this question in the, in the, in the exam okay uh, the, so thank you very much that's all i'm very quick today i uh, just i think nothing more to discuss about this these of the exam here